Don't really like it. Nope. Don't really like it, but right now I don't have any great way of trimming it and getting rid of it, so we'll deal with it. Yo guys, Christian and Spring Gamer, and uh, welcome to a bit of a different video that I really haven't done before quite yet. Uh, it's a top five video, haven't done quite yet, so I'm not sure how these things are going to be done. So it might be a little bit all over the place, might be a little bit, bit messy a little bit, but you know what? We'll go for it. So, Krita. I love Krita. Made a video on it. It's doing astoundingly well. Like, geez, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, because if a video is still getting a lot of views somehow, uh... I think it's up to about what? It's like, uh, he's up to 2,758 views already. So that is an astounding level of exposure and growth from just one video that is, after seven or eight months is still getting tons of views. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's much obliged that you're still watching this video to this day. So yeah. Anyway, topic at hand. Krita is a fantastic piece of software. I love it. And I will shout from the rooftops as to why people should be using it. And... That's what this today's video is going to be about. It's not going to be a tutorial. It's not going to be like, hey, here's how you make this in Krita and stuff like that. It's five reasons why Krita is better than Photoshop. And there's actually uh, quite a few. And then you'll see why Krita is a little better than Photoshop, if not a lot better than Photoshop in the end. Let's get into it. All right, so before we begin, I would like to mention that I do stream on Twitch. Right now, right now I don't have much of a schedule going on right now because, well... I'm kind of booked pretty much on every possible day that I can with my two day jobs that I have going right now. So it's probably gonna be the same way for at least another month and a half, maybe a little sooner. Not entirely sure. But if you'd like to see what I'm streaming every week, um, if I can, uh, I do have a schedule that I do try to post when I can on my Twitch page. It's gonna be right there on the Twitch page. You can you can see it, see what I'm streaming and hopefully join me. But if you'd like to, uh, well, we do, we do some just chatting, but most of the time it's just, me and a couple of other guys, or one other guy, just playing Star Trek Online or Star Citizen, or maybe even GTA Online. That might be a thing coming soon. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to join me for that, the link for that will be down below. Anyway, let's move on with the video. So my first reason is one, it is cross-platform. And this is something that Photoshop really does not have the candlelight like to when it comes to Krita. Uh, Krita is available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and free BSD if you can get it working. There are a few hoops you have to jump through when it comes to free BSD, but if you can get it working, it works great, but Krita is more, more primarily a Linux program. It's written with Linux specifically in mind, and it works better on Linux than it does on Windows or Mac OS. Now, Krita does have a kind of tendency to crash a lot, and even though it's gotten a lot better over the years, on Linux, I found it does that a lot less than it does on Windows or Mac OS. So, but that kind of cross-platform cr compatibility, I think is fantastic because it gives you the option, the choice, the, basically the option of what do you want to use? Do you like Windows? Do you like Mac? Do you like Linux? Do you want to go through the hell of going, getting free, it to work on FreeBSD and you like the kind of tinkering kind of guy? Then Krita is right for you. And because it's open source, you can get it to work in a specific manner. You can take parts out. You can do whatever you want with it. I love it. And because of that, it's really more flexible than I guess you could say most other software like Photoshop or Affinity or the Affinity Suite. And because of that, I would basically highly recommend this program Krita for anyone based on that one fact alone. Uh, but Photoshop in general uh, does not have great cross compatibility because Adobe really is sleeping on Linux support. Uh, I've over the years I've actually kind of kind of kind of kept up with that idea. Like, is Adobe ever going to uh, port Creative Suite to Linux? And looking on forums and stuff like that. It's not going to happen because if you're not aware of uh, adobe kind of held a bit of a bit of a poll in one of their forums on their website about trying to gauge the the level of demand for a linux version of the creative suite or specifically premiere pro and photoshop and stuff like that and they concluded on their own end that it just it's just not worth it right now to spend the money and effort in the r d to port the creative suite over to linux uh, now this is not a video on about about this whole about porting to this Porting uh, Creative Suite to Linux is just pertinent to this, for, to this first point. Um, so because of the, because of this lack of support for the biggest Creative Suite in the world right now, you had to find alternatives, and thankfully, something stuff like Creative exists because it does most of what you need when it comes to Photoshop users for basically a whole lot less. And we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. So my second reason is that it, ha it has support for color spaces, and a lot of them. Uh, Krita is pretty good when it comes to the color spaces. It 
It supports all the major standards, uh, LAB, HSL, SMPTE, ACES, REC 2020, R R sRGB, like all the stuff that you would need uh, for drawing and stuff like that in, in uh, management of color spaces. Uh, you can actually convert between them within the project as you see, see the need to because Creed is able to take the colors that it has already in the project, convert them to something completely different, and still be able to work just fine. Uh, there are there can be some problems that arise from it, like some incorrect incorrect colors. But you know what? It's worked so so well for me so far that basically I would rather use it instead. Um, but when it comes to Photoshop, uh, you cannot cross you, you can't, can't convert between color spaces as you see need to. In fact, when you need to know the color color space you need to use when you create the project, otherwise you're kind of screwed at that point. But with Krita, you can convert between them, and that's important because when you're when you're Krita is a program specifically designed with digital digital painting and digital art in mind. And because in the need to kind of convert between color spaces as you need to, like say if a particular part of an image is not particularly in the great color, uh, color that you need it to, you can convert the color space to something that you need and continue working from there. Because Photoshop is not specifically designed around that kind of thing, it doesn't have that kind of thing in mind. So. If you need color spaces, you need uh, Krita is the way to go. And when you add in all those color grading, uh, color grading controls, uh, it gets even better because that means you can kind of edit those colors you see need to. It's really great. I love it. All right, my third reason is GMIC, and I can't talk about open source software and digital painting and stuff like that without talking about GMIC. So if you're not hip to GMIC, well, you probably should watch my first video on Krita because I actually used it in that video. But if you're still not hip to it, uh, GMIC as a name is an acronym it is uh, for Gracie's Magic for Image Computing. But what it is in actuality is a plugin for many pieces of software, Paint.net, GIMP, Krita, and yes, Photoshop, uh, that allows you to uh, add additional functionality to the program. Uh, there, now, GMIC uh, in its base form is a command line program. So if you need to use it, you need to know how to use the command line. However, there is something called GMIC QT, which is a graphical interface version written, of course, QT. And Krita used to ship natively with GMIQT, QT, although nowadays you need to link it up manually, which is fine. You just download the GMIQT QT plugin for, uh, for Krita plugin from their website. You link up the zip file and it works just fine. I've had zero problems with it ever since. Uh, but the, the the level of control and level of power that it gives you with GMIC is astounding because it has crap ton of stuff that you can use to generate different types of images and manipulate images the way that you need to. And for for GMIC and Krita, I think it works best because they kind of go hand in hand, like digital painting and it's like special effects that you would need for that kind of specific thing. They do go hand in hand. And I think that the version for Krita is probably the one that you should be using because well, that's what it's kind of designed for in a sense. Um, but because it's open source, it also means that people contribute to it. Now, on the Photoshop side of things, it's a little different because, well, Photoshop is closed source. So when you put GMIC into uh, Photoshop, you're kind of limited to what it's able to do alone. And there really is a downside to it, in my opinion, because it's just, you can't do a whole lot with it uh, outside of the base functionality that GMIC already includes. Whereas with everything else, you can just add it to it and you don't have any license issues when it comes to the base program that you're using it for. Anyway, back to the next program, uh, next thing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, my fourth reason is brush presets. Now, this is kind of a thing that where Krita and Photoshop are kind of on a level playing field with, more or less. Uh, they both support the import, uh, the that allow you to import um, brush presets into the program that you can use. However, that is where the differences end. Uh, Krita does it way better because in Photoshop, there's a bunch of convoluted buttons you have to press to get to the brush presets that you need. Um, but wait, I haven't already told anyone the story quite yet, but the early days of this channel, the name was actually gonna be Ch Ch a Kick and Chatai, which for all intents and purposes was not a great name because it actually happened to be the name of another person on the internet. Um, won't get into too much detail about that right now. Uh, but for it was still intended to be a Let's Play channel. And really, my end slates, I was really heavily inspired 
by Windows 8 and Metro Design. And if you're old enough to remember that, good. If you aren't, good, whatever. Anyway, um, I was designing, I was trying to design the uh, buttons for annotations because you remember this was still back in the day when annotations were a thing. And I would try, I would, I had a brush preset pack for Metro Icon Design that I had gotten off the internet. And I was trying to stamp, use the stamp tool to put the uh, image, the icons on the bar and it just wouldn't work. It was, it was either, it was either just not working at all or they'd be too big or they'd be too small or if they were to blow them up, they would be too grainy. It was, it was bad and it could have just been the brush preset I, pack I had because it was kind of a, kind of a CD one to begin with. It just didn't work as well as I, as I would have liked it to. However, in Krita, on the other hand, if you were to use a brush preset, you just select a brush preset and you use whatever tool you need to draw the image and it just works. And I really, really like that because it, is, it, it, cuts, all, it cuts off the fat and just makes it easy. It makes it, it does what it needs to do. And that's kind of a big kind of tenant when it comes to Krita is that it does what it needs it to do. Um, well, because like when it comes to text, because text can be a bit of a funky thing in Krita, but it's also kind of a funky thing in GIMP too. So it doesn't really, <laughs> It really, it really doesn't make much of a difference when it comes to that kind of thing. But brush presets in general are better in Krita than they are in Photoshop, just hands down. All right, my last reason, it's free. Like seriously, you don't have to pay a single penny for it. And that is kind of the, probably the biggest reason I think when it comes to why Krita is better than Photoshop. Because Photoshop is great, it's powerful, you know, it's, it's a lot of people like it, but it's just, you have to pay for it. And you get most of the functionality of, of, of Photoshop in Krita that you can also expand even further. So why would you pay money for Photoshop if Krita does everything you needed to already and then some, and you can also draw things too. Well, that comes down to what you need specifically to do. Uh, Photoshop for all intents and purposes is designed with image manipulation in mind. It really wasn't that designed for um, drawing and stuff like that. Even though it's good at it and people do use it for it, it's not really what it's designed specifically for. Uh, but when the similarities between Photoshop and Krita come into play here, it, it gets a little more muddy because Krita, you know, does support uh, layer styles, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, it does support uh, converting from color spaces as something like Photoshop cannot do. Um, it just supports a whole bunch of stuff that I think Krita has an advantage of, of, of Photoshop for, as I've explained out in this video. But because you, but the biggest thing of all what is that it's free. It's just, you would, you would be kind of a fool to not switch over to it if, all you need is what Krita offers already. And that's for most content creators, that is what they need. Uh, you could also, uh, and because of because of the, the, of the free nature of open source software, you can also supplement Krita with GIMP or Glimpse and get the functionality that even more functionality together that Photoshop has, even if it's a couple of different programs. And frankly, on Linux, it's even e it's e easy to get those programs go up and going because repositories are a thing, so you don't have to download additional stuff. You just need Krita, Gimp or Glimpse, either or, and you're off to the races. It's just easy as that. And a lot of people do appreciate that the the, the the zero price tag because, well, a lot of people, when they're content creators, they tend to like to stay on one platform. They don't like to use like maybe a Windows PC and then something else for that. Now, personally for me, I have a Linux laptop and I have a Windows PC because I stream on Twitch. I can't stream a whole lot of stuff from my laptop because it's running on Linux. And so I use a Windows PC for games and recording and streaming and stuff like that because it has all my, you know, it has all the support for my games. So I have used two computers, but no, most people don't. So people who want to program like would like to use Linux. So they would rather stay on Linux if they're kind of a programming content creator. So there are plenty of reasons why Krita is better when it's free. It's just this, I've kind of laid them out in this video, but I think I'm rambling on. So I think I'll go for a last reason. And I kind of let it slip a little bit here a minute ago, but it is layer styles. And layer styles is actually pretty interesting because Photoshop has minimal support for them uh, compared to Krita. Um, basically, all you have to do is just right click on a vector or paint layer in Krita, and you can just add layer styles as you need to. Simple as that. They, it supports a whole lot of things like uh, glows, uh, shadows, bevel and emboss, patterns, gradients, and color overlays and stuff like that. Uh, you get a whole, a whole bunch of, you get a whole bunch of functionality and tools god dang i can't just stop going. you get a whole lot of stuff for it and frankly i would i would be very remiss if i didn't have it like i i need those color space uh, uh those uh, layer styles because they help the whole god i can't stop hiccuping <laughs> they help a whole lot and really i just can't live without them anyway 
Anyway, that was a bit of a video. I, I hope I didn't ramble on too long about it. I mean, this is kind of a this is kind of a different, well, not really a new format. I've been doing these video, uh, videos in this kind of space for a little while now, but it's just a different type of video I've never really done before. So I'm still kind of learning about how to do them properly. So really, it just comes down to like, uh, hey, like, hey, don't ramble. But Creed is a special tip, top interest for me. So of course I'm going to ramble. Why wouldn't I? But yeah, anyway, uh, sound off in the comments below. Like, what do you like about Krita? And what would you, with, after seeing this video, would you switch to Krita over Photoshop? Because yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably would want to switch over to Krita from Photoshop. Although you probably use Krita already if you watch this video, since the one video that uh, has done so well on my channel is based on Krita anyway. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, then please give it a bit, please consider giving it a little bit of a like. Uh, that does help the channel. Or if you didn't like it, uh, dislike works too. But, you know, it also helps with engagement, so thank you. And uh, if you uh, if you'd like to see more from the channel, be sure to subscribe with uh, notifications on. And uh, thank you for joining this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.